Okay? And um, they then end up here at the top. Here's the patch panel. This is the patch panel up there. Okay? And then we patch from the patch panel here. So it's all nicely labeled so we know exactly uh, where are we connecting, okay, which machine we're connecting to. So all the machines, uh, they have a label there, okay. And so we patch from here to our uh, switch. So here's our switch. It's an HP switch. So we have two HP, uh, actually three HP switches, okay. And uh, just, just uh, to show that we can do fiber to fiber. So we have a fiber link between uh, this switch here and this switch here so that the um, machines can basically connect these machines basically connect here through this switch and also connect to um, uh, this network here so we're joining these two networks via the fiber link okay so all the data going through this this fiber link here okay and uh, you can see here it says 1000 base X. So that's your gigabit uh, Ethernet here, okay? With the fiber link. And then, and then here is where we connect. Um, this is our, uh, 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 which one? Uh, this is, th there's our router. Uh, this is our, this is our uh, server down here, okay? So we have a server here and that server actually uh, simulate network nodes. Uh, uh, so each node is run on a virtual machine and that virtual machine simulates a router, okay? And the router connects to other routers and we're using VLANs for that, okay? Virtual LANs, okay? And so this communication then between router and router enables us to build uh, large-scale networks. So we're simulating, for example, Lambda Rail, Florida Lambda Rail network, okay? Uh, so, and then some peering points on the internet, okay? And, uh, and each of them have that corresponding IP address. And the routers exchange messages. So the router use uh, BGP protocol, border gateway protocol, to communicate with each other. And those are all run here. We do have one router here. Uh, that we haven't used yet. There is uh, our Cisco router. Okay, there it is. You see, there's nothing to plug into that router. Something must plug in. You see it on the back. Okay, on the back, you see the interface of the router. Okay, if you come around here, you can see actually there's a console cable now. The console cable nowadays is no longer your your uh, cable, um, your um, rollover cable. So it's different, right? So you can uh, connect via RJ45, via a twisted pair. So you don't, you don't need a rollover serial communication anymore, okay? And then we have two ethernet ports here. So all we have, two ethernet ports, so that's all the router has, okay? Now it has these slots, and then we can add more connections here. So it has modules. You plug in these modules. So I can have, for example, a T1 module, T1 line module. So I plug that in, and then my router would connect to the service provider uh, over a T1 line, okay? The internet service provider, AT&T or so, would put the T1 line into my home, and then, and then the, the connector would connect to that module, okay? So, uh, uh, here we have basically just uh, two Ethernets that we can connect for the router joining two networks, okay? And that's really what, what it is doing, just connecting networks. So no host is connected here, okay? All right, so let me come around here. So each of these machines actually have, uh, this is why you see so many uh, cables here, they have... Um, two network cards, network interface cards. One that connects to a, our simulation network, the other to a management network. And then uh, the management network is where we uh, basically do file sharing, where you can log in, 
um, you we have a, a directory servers uh, uh, so you can log in you can authenticate with the machine uh, and so all this here which uh, basically is your patch panel your switches the three switches okay uh, the router which is actually currently not used and the server simulates its own network we're not on the, the, on the internet, yet we can log in on the machine, authenticate, because we're connecting to our server here, okay? And we can then connect to a Google website, okay? That requires DNS services, which we're also running on the server, okay? Uh, that requires DHCP services, which we're also running on the server. For each of our networks, then, uh, uh, for example, for uh, FSU, Florida State University, we have a DNS server and a DHCP server, okay? And then within uh, FSU, okay, they're finally here. <laughs> within uh, those networks, we can create our own larger network, which we did, okay? All right, and the rest is just, so this is what is called a KVM switch. And a KVM switch allows me to connect to different servers. So how do I get to a server if it's on the rack here? I want to I log in on the server directly. So I use my KVM switch. And uh, that KVM switch then connects to um, uh, the other keyboard and the video output to my terminal here. So that I can then uh, see uh, access the the, uh, the console there, um, the computer there, because that also has a video card output, right? But if you have like uh, 20 uh, machines there, they all have their own video card and they all have their keyboards. You don't want 20 keyboards connecting to your app. You only want one keyboard. And uh, this is actually also integrated into your rack. This is your own console, okay? So that connects to your KVM switch, and then you can just click and see here it comes up. So now the monitor comes up, I have my keyboard. So this is like a rack. Many of these racks, they may have a console here. So a network administrator would have to uh, go here and uh, then access the machine if, if they need to do something directly. They can always, of course, remote log in, and that's the preferred way. But um, um, so you can integrate that, and uh, and then you can access all the servers. So downstairs, um, I believe this actually came from downstairs, if I remember, because we're not using it anymore, right? Not sure. But uh, but you can go and then uh, switch to the different. Um, See, there's a different uh, computer, so I switch basically, we only have two here. So, so I, you have to push that button here, it's a little bit awkward. So the KVM switch is usually at the top, then you can c just select. And all your switches are usually at the top if you have servers. So you have a rack full of servers, and there's your UPS. So the, the rack is usually filled with UPS, server, server, servers, in the middle somewhere so you can nicely um, uh, access the keyboard uh, is your console and then at the end you have your switches so you connect your servers and then usually they also sell you like power strips so you can easily <coughs> connect we have our own power strip here can you see that one here okay so that's a power strip you can connect uh, here all your servers and then and then they connect down here to your UPS and so this machine here also has all the media uh, equipment for the projector here. So we excluded those as well. And then, and then everything <coughs> is connected to this switch. So if power goes down, it powers all our servers, the servers down, okay? And uh, once it powers on, uh, power is back, it powers them automatically on. They come all on, and they load all the switches, load the configuration, and we're back. Nothing is lost. Okay. So when we had the power outage the other day, um, and power came back on, everything was fully restored. Okay. 
So that's the way you want to set that up if you ever get into this business. And then here, you take this out and this slides uh, back in here. So this takes up exactly, oh, 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 careful, careful. This, this arm comes here. So, so John was supposed to fix all this because we bought some extension cords and he never did. So uh, I need to find someone who is going to do this because we bought some extension cords so we can actually lock it all up. So, uh, so that's usually the setup. So we have actually another server. This server they built for parts. This server we bought. That's an R210 from Dell. We bought that. And then, uh, so it's got that vessel in front so you can access uh, the power button, for example, here. Um, but this is usually, data centers have racks of this for as large uh, as this building, you know, full with racks of machines, okay? They have all these services and they all run, you know, your, your uh, services, your web services, uh, Amazon, for example, and they host, you can actually host cloud services and so forth. So they have that and it's all automated, has to be fully automated, okay? Uh, so that's that's pretty much it, and you can see the lights blinking because the switches they exchange messages. They run a spanning tree protocol to figure out to which port to send um, when data packages are coming through, and then the routers also exchange messages constantly. So they say, okay, who's here? Okay, I'm sending packages out and so forth. So BGP, OSPF, RIP, OSPF usually um, internally, and then. We don't use RIP, RIP. Uh, and then the BGP, the EPGP, IPGP. That's what they are exchanging messages constantly. So you have constantly traffic. You can see that there. Okay. So we'll get into BGP later and OSPF later. And then at some point you might have to, you might have to program that. But the patch cable is just for me to patch. That's all it does. All right. And then that's how I connect to my uh, switches. So lots of cable into switches, only one cable into router. And then that connects with that one cable on the router. So don't draw anything to routers like crazy, like, oh, my cables go to routers. That's not a router. All right, I'll see you next time.